Welcome back to Satvik Infotech friends. So as part of our AWS learning series, we have covered like most of the services in AWS which will be used by uh, uh, data engineers as well as like uh, DevOps team as well as architect, right? So we did like the important services what is being used by uh, mostly by DevOps and architect team to design a system. Okay, so now the next step of it right so till now whatever we did we logged into aws console and we did everything manually okay so do you guys think is that the thing our devops engineers or architects are doing on regular basis the answer is no okay basically in real time okay in an organization or in an mnc or in an enterprise however you want to call it as okay no engineers will be doing the uh, design or creating EC2 or S3 bucket or uh, whatever like uh, config or event edge or uh, event bridge or ELB or ALB, subnet, security group, whatever it is, right? So we don't create them manually, okay? So we don't create manually. Create it, create it manually. Then we should have a question like, okay, how it's being done? okay so in uh, the enterprise or in the real world right so people want to automate because the mantra for devops is like always automate the things right it's not about uh, doing things manually so we need to keep automating it so earlier whatever the work small piece of work whatever we do we try to automate them okay uh, by writing a small script in Linux shell script or Python script, something like that, right? So now the question is, how do I automate the entire infrastructure? Okay, when as an engineer, as a DevOps people, as an architect, they start thinking about an automating an infrastructure. Why should I get that much delay? So why should I manually go and click? Okay, if I want to spin up 100 EC2, how do I do it? Okay, so in order to answer to all these questions, Okay, that's where the birth of infrastructure as code has happened. Okay, infra structure as a code. Okay, most of the people might have heard about it as infrastructure as a code or IAC. Okay, so now Kumar, like, how does that getting related to our AWS, right? So even AWS, okay, offers a infrastructure as code. Okay, which is nothing but cloud formation. Okay, so now this YAML is getting related to your cloud formation. Okay, so basically if you want to automate the creation of your infrastructure or automate your creation of your storage or automate the security part, okay, it would be easier if it's been scripted way rather than you do going to aws console and clicking it right and also the one more important point for doing it so okay in real time you know right whenever either you have a windows server or you have a linux server we do get security patches okay and also like regular maintenance patches from the vendor okay it can be either from microsoft it can be either from linux or it can be either from solaris or whatever it is right so we do get those security patches from that respective vendor either once in 60 days or once in 90 days or either monthly okay so in those scenarios if the server is our on-prem or if the server is like a virtual server within our local private network okay we do a regular patching of it okay we go and patch that server it means that we do apply a new set of uh, binaries or bundles on top of existing OS. Okay, which will be done by a dedicated team, we, whom we will call as Linux administrators. Okay. Now, let's look at uh, EC2. EC2, we don't have any administrator as a separate team. It's all you. You who created the server. Okay. So, how do I do that? Because again, EC2 is nothing but it's running on some OS, right? It's Red Hat Linux or Amazon or whatever the flavor you choose, Ubuntu or whatever it is. So how do I patch it? So as in general, okay, while we do the patching, okay, 
we get a new AMI. So whenever Amazon or AWS releases, right? If they apply patches on their uh, images, yeah, Amazon releases a new AMI. Means that if you have a system already running, let's take an example, right, with an image. Okay, let's take I have an EC2. Okay, let's take I have built this EC2 in the month of October. Let me October EC2 build with some AMI hyphen some number. Hope by this time you are aware of what is AMI, which I have already explained Amazon machine image. Okay, which is again vary from region to region. This number varies from region to region. That's a key which you have to remember always. Okay. So I have built a EC2 in the month of October. For example, if I go to November, okay, if I want to build a new image in November, there is a possibility that this AMA might not even exist. Okay, there might be a new security patch applied on this AMA. So this particular uh, real image, basically assume that this is a Linux Red Hat Linux image. So in the month of November, you might have a different uh, Red Hat Linux image. Okay, with some AMI, some other number. So both are different. So it means that Amazon or AWS update their images whenever a patch set comes in. So if you want your system to be up to date, are compatible with the latest security patches and security things you need to go with a different AMA so what does it mean if you are going to a different AMA it means that every month and month or every two month once whenever you get a new AMA you need to build the new system okay you need to build the new system as such Okay, with all the existing configurations. Let's assume now. So in the EC2 which you build on October, it's used as a web server with Apache HTTP hosted. Okay, and uh, um, online web app is loaded which is written in java maybe spring boot java spring boot with a few configurations okay assume this is a scenario so you have a web server which is running with apache and the application which is running is an online web app okay which is written in spring boot and you know right java again will have a java installed and also like uh, it needs some configurations to be done on the web server so that the application will run without any issues. Okay, so now assume that whatever you server you built in October is going to run fine. Okay, it's going to be uh, well and good until November when new AMA is released. Okay, when new AMA is released, this is still going to be run, but this features, right, whatever the security or uh, any vulnerability which has got fixed in the October release, which will not come to your current server. So if you want to be up to date with all the vulnerabilities and securities, now as a DevOps engineer, you need to build a new system with November release. Okay, you build the new system with November release. Okay, you need to ensure all the state, the state of the web application, right, should be copied over to the November release because you don't want to uh, build the server from the scratch and uh, install Apache everything from the scratch again, right? See ideally we do that, but the state when I mean the state Okay, the users whoever is used the system the credentials the cache or whatever, right? The data files created by the Java or any log files created by Java. So everything needs to be migrated to the new server Okay, so now think about the complexity so whenever you create a new server, you need to ensure all the applications are installed and also the same versions of applications installed. If it has any roles and uh, privileges to any user, everything needs to be there. So whatever the settings which is been made in October should be done in November. 
okay let's say you done it think about december how about december so when december comes again there will be a new system built you need to ensure you need to do all the things again so it keeps going okay the process keeps going so you need to do for november december january february again and again you need to do the same activity which is going to be a burden for you and also if you miss to do something here okay the entire system is going to fail okay so how do i overcome all this by using infrastructure as a code okay guys great okay so now let's jump into our cloud formation so i have explained like the importance of uh, infrastructure as a code why are we doing it and everything right okay fine so in aws as i mentioned for infrastructure as a code we use something called cloud formation so cloud formation supports two languages basically so one is json probably you guys might have aware about already the json which i have explained okay how to read the config files and how to change and everything right because all the events in aws is the form of json so by this time you guys might have seen it or understood it okay the second format is yaml so again yaml is one more uh, language which is like growing and getting popularity because of its support to multiple technologies okay as part of uh, devops is concerned yaml has been used in multiple places for configurations and most of the tools nowadays supports yaml based configurations okay so one among them you can take again cloud formation which has been uh, most used uh, uh cloud vendor okay and also kubernetes most of your part specification or service specification deployments whatever you configure most of the things are configured in yaml format so now so before okay before we go into right let me go to my uh, vs code let me try to get some yaml template from internet sample cloud formation template in yaml okay is that have any sample okay i got it one okay so this is the yaml file right okay this is how your cloud formation is going to look when we actually start working on it so forget about the terminologies here try to understand what is this code is all about so you guys know right okay let me go to my uh, okay so hope by this time you guys know json okay so that i am going to take json as an example to explain you the yaml concepts okay so in json it talks as key value pair correct so i am going to take yaml this side i will keep yaml here yaml is again key value pair that's why we are using this both uh, together right or else we cannot use together if both are not supporting key value pair so how do i define uh, a key value pair in json name satvik correct so when i give like this it can be a string it is treated as a string i can even enclose with single quotes double quotes or without that okay it's all optional okay the same way how do i uh, define the same in yaml in yaml its name colon satvik no brackets nothing it follow a structured format similar to python okay we don't follow any brackets or anything in uh, yaml it's a kind of a space indented uh, language so basically the indentation is uh, important okay so next thing okay maybe uh, the possible data types which you might have seen with json right so you might have string numbers uh, which constitute integer and float 
and boolean okay all the three are supported in yaml also oh sorry i am typing it here itself okay let me jump into this one maybe i will put this something left so here also it supports string number boolean so still now we I haven't seen any differences basically there is no much differences between yaml and json the only thing is that like uh, how you present it the way this getting deferred is like the format which you present it nothing much okay okay so hope till this you understand yes hope you understood uh, with this okay let me move all these things out let me take a sample json template maybe i will take json or probably i should i would have some json templates already here okay this is too big i don't want to take and confuse okay let me take this okay i will explain with this okay so let's see guys so now i have a json template here okay so in this json you need to understand what each one does okay okay before that let me see if i have any original json this is like all dictionaries which i don't want to show sorry about that guys or maybe i will go and search for config event for S3 JSON. Okay. Two, 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 okay. Let me take this. So this is not any normal. Okay. So let's keep it nearby okay so guys try to understand i am i have a json file okay i am going to or i am trying to write this particular json in yaml format okay maybe uh, i will remove few things okay let it keep let's see so if you go and look at this json right so json file always follow a curly braces notation from here till here it's a json file okay so and again the parent record is nothing but records which starts here and ends here so so usually in general any yaml file will have three dashes and it's very very basic uh, for yaml okay and it gets started with what is the target records right okay records so it gets started with records so now i will have a colon here for yaml file this is a syntax okay and as i mentioned it's a strict indented language okay how much indentation generally we follow we follow two spaces for any sub records okay what is a child record of uh, records so child is like another uh, dictionary basically it's a dictionary right so dictionary of event version and everything so let me copy till this so all these things are going to be there so if i give like this subsequently like this it means all these are okay before i go into that right so if as i mentioned yaml is also a key value pair so what is the key here key is nothing but event version so event version as 2.0 correct okay so maybe i will type simple yaml here event version colon 2.20 okay event name sample records one two 
क्या रिकॉर्ड्स इवेंट समेस्त्री बकेट क्रिएट सॉरी टाइप क्रिएट ऑब्जेक्ट्स ऑब्जेक्ट सैंपल वन डॉट जेसन आईफन सैंपल टू डॉट जेपीजी सैंपल थ्री डॉट डीओसी सो ओके सो नाउ हैव यू क्लोज लुक एट दिस गाइस ओके व्हाट इज दिस इनफर्स्ट टू एस ओके सो बेसिकली as i mentioned yaml is a key value pair notation so if you want to declare or define a simple key value pair which is nothing but event equal to this or even name equal to this means that this particular value 20 is of uh, belongs to the key which is nothing but event version the value sample belongs to the key event name okay so i hope this two should not have any confusion whereas event version is nothing but of type number so even name is of type sample okay as i mentioned earlier string can be enclosed with single quotes or double quotes or even without quotes in yaml so it consider everything as a string okay i hope till this you understand and you should not have any confusion in defining a simple value in a yaml file okay great so now let's look at the records so when you look at the records, records is a key and it has an another key pairs. Okay. So if you closely look at this resembles something like your dictionaries. So how do I write this in dictionary? Okay. okay so whenever you have a key value pair as a child object for any other parent object it means that it's a dictionary object so whenever you want to rewrite your yam json so for example you are referring to some internet document where they might have given some events in json format and you want to convert it to a yaml format you need to know what needs to be converted as like this and what needs to be given as a simple one and what needs to be given as like this okay so if something is given like this for example in this use case if you take this one so this is given as json so if i want to convert this piece into yaml okay this is something like this okay one two spaces okay so i need to convert this as like this hope you guys are getting how do i do okay so you can ask me hey, kuma there is something like objects and it's starting with hyphen what does this mean okay it's a list or array if you want to speak in terms of uh, arrays right so what does it like objects of sample one comma json sorry dot json sample two dot json sample three dot json so the this kind of implementation can be written like this in yaml and again this implementation is also supported in yaml okay it's not that you have to always use like this you can also write like this the same can be also written like this no arm in that okay so let's see if i have any uh, a list uh, type of declaration in our sample so that it's easy for me to explain no in this example i do not have any list 
it's all like dictionary objects okay so i thought of like explaining you all these basics so in case of any document which you are seeing so if you have something like this it means that a dictionary you need to create if it is something like this it's an array and it's a pretty straightforward objects in yaml so we, if you have this basic understanding okay it would be easy for us to work on cloud formation which is going to be our next session okay when we create any cloud formation templates we will be using only yaml standard and not the json standard even though it's supported i am preferably will be using only yaml and not the json because like i like the way it's written and it's structured and also this is going to if you learn yaml it will also help you to do the same while we go into our kubernetes session okay that's the main intent for uh, having this as a separate session so hope you understood and you like it to share with your friends and give a thumbs up which keeps motivating us okay thanks thanks guys thanks for watching